All right, today we're starting Unit 2, Packet 1, Introduction to Similarity and Congruence. We've split Unit 2 up into two sections just because it's so large. So this is actually Unit 2A, and we'll take a test on Unit 2A, um, and then we'll start Unit 2B. 2A focuses on congruence, and 2B focuses on similarity. So we're, we're going to be talking about the differences between the two today in this video, but just know for the first part of the unit, we're going to focus on congruence. So starting off, countdown to the Geometry EOC. August is through. We are in September, so we are at nine months until our Geometry EOC. Okay, our vocabulary terms. Similarity. Similar figures have the same shape but may differ in size. That should sound familiar to you. Congruence, exactly equal in size and shape. So our notation here is different between similarity and congruence. Note, triangle ABC is similar to, so this squiggly line just means similar, to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. If they're exactly the same in size and shape, then they're congruent. So the squiggly line over an equal sign means congruent. Now it's not a coincidence that they both have the squiggly line. If something is congruent, then it is also automatically similar. Congruent figures are also similar. So that's why the squiggly line is in both notations. If you look over here for an example, this example should look like a type of transformation that we've heard about. You saying it at home, dilation. All right, then congruent, all sides and all angles are equal. Congruent figures are exactly the same in size and shape. All right, so go ahead and determine if the following figures are just similar or similar and congruent. Remember, if they're congruent, they're also similar. So go ahead right now, pause the video, and try to label similar or similar and congruent for these four examples right here. Okay, so this one is just similar. They're not exactly the same in size and shape. They're same shape, different size. These two triangles right here are similar and congruent. They have the same shape, same size. These two triangles, similar and congruent. Same shape, same size. And this letter F right here, similar and congruent. All right, I know you were itching to tell me what type of transformations these were as well. So we're going to label the type of transformation and then also say whether we thought it was similar or similar and congruent. So this right here is a dilation. This transformation here is a translation. This one here, reflection over the line x equals 0, or the y-axis. So reflection. And this last one, a rotation. I'm going to switch out my pin because it doesn't seem to be working. All right. So let's go ahead and label these four transformations, and then we're going to put next to each transformation whether it was similar or similar and congruent. All right, so dilation, similar only. And I'm going to add the word only right here. So similar only. Our translation was similar and congruent. Our reflection, similar and congruent. <laughs> I just wrote the word reflection. That's not what I meant to write. Similar and congruent. And then our rotation, similar and congruent. All right. So right now, I want you to take a second and pause the video, and I want you to see if you can determine if the pre-image and the image will just be similar only or similar and congruent. 
So pause the video, try A, B, C, and D, and E on your own, and then hit play when you're ready. Okay? A reflection over the y-axis and a translation two units up. Reflection and translation are both rigid, so this would be similar and congruent. All right, a 90 degree rotation about the origin and a dilation with a scale factor of two. We haven't learned about scale factors yet, but right now that you know a dilation makes a figure larger or smaller. So if we're changing the actual size but not the shape, this is going to be similar only. If it were just the rotation, it'd be similar and congruent. But since the dilation is thrown in there, it's similar only. All right, a translation, three units to the left and four units down. We only have a translation. Translation is rigid, so similar and congruent. All right, a dilation with a scale factor of one half and a reflection over the line y equals x. Since we have dilation in here, that means it's similar only. It doesn't matter that the reflection is also there. Once you include the dilation, the figure is now similar only. And then the last one, a 270 rotation and a reflection. Both of those are rigid, so we can say that these two figures are similar and congruent. So if you only have rigid transformations, then that means that your figure is going to be similar and congruent. If you have a dilation as part of your transformations, it's going to be similar only. Okay, go ahead and flip the page over. All right, take a minute and try the rigid transformation review. So where is the image now? I'm going to continually to rem continue to remind you about what the quadrants are, quadrant one, two, three, and four. So I want you to picture in your head a coordinate plane so picture a coordinate plane. Remember we start here at 1, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 4. So go ahead, pause the video, and try A through F. See if you can figure out where um, the pre-image will end up, what quadrant will the transformation lie. When you're ready, start it back up. Okay. A rectangle that starts in quadrant 2 and rotates 180 counterclockwise will end up in quadrant 4. All right, a triangle in quadrant 1 is reflected over the y-axis, so that's going to end up in quadrant 2. A circle in quadrant 4 is reflected over the line y equals x, and what quadrant will the transformation lie? So if it's reflected over the line y equals x, it's reflected over a diagonal line right here. So if it's reflected over that line, it ends up in quadrant 2. A trapezoid in quadrant 3 is rotated 90 degrees and then reflected over the x-axis. They don't give us a direction here, so we know the direction is counterclockwise. So if it starts in 3, and goes counterclockwise, 90 degrees, it ends up in 4. Then it's reflected over the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, so it actually ends up in quadrant 1. A parallelogram in quadrant 1 is reflected over the line y equals negative x, and then reflected again over the y-axis. So y equals negative x is a diagonal line going down from left to right, so it's actually going to be flipped from 1 to 3 because we're reflecting over that line. And then if it's reflected again over the y-axis, the y-axis is the vertical one, so we're reflecting over it, we end up in quadrant 4. All right, a point in quadrant 4 is rotated 270 counterclockwise about the origin. So if we start here and we go 270 counterclockwise, we end up in quadrant 3. All right, so putting it all together, what type of transformation creates similar figures only? Is it A, translation, B, reflection, C, rotation, or D, dilation? Go ahead and circle your answer. All right, D, dilation. I'm sure you all got that right. All right, we're going to actually get into the meat of the lesson now. 
and I'm going to teach you a acronym that you need to know. Acronyms are um, groupings of letters right here that mean something or stand for something. So later in this unit, we're going to get into something called proofs. And proofs are where we're actually going to prove out geometric theories using postulates and rules that we know about. And this will be a, a proof statement right here. So this will come back later, and it's important to know what it means. CPCTC. This means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we left out corresponding parts of, we left out the little of, and we left out R, but CPCTC means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So you don't need to write out that statement anymore. In geometry, you can just write CPCTC and we'll know what that means. So basically what that means is that if we know that two triangles are congruent, all corresponding angles are congruent and all corresponding sides are congruent. Now we briefly touched on the topic of corresponding. Basically what corresponding means is the same point in both triangles. So if it's the point at the top, it's the same point in two, two congruent triangles or the same side in two congruent triangles. All right, so we're going to learn about congruent statements. You see the notation right here, the equal sign with the squiggly line over it. Order is so important right here. Order is extremely important. So um, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. This tells you right here what angles and what sides are congruent just by the ordering of these triangles. So all corresponding angles are congruent. Do you see how A is the first letter in this triangle? So angle A corresponds to the first letter in the second triangle. So angle A is congruent to angle X. So angle B is the second letter, and Y is the second letter. So angle B is congruent to angle Y. C is my third letter, and Z is my last letter as well. So angle C is congruent to angle Z. Now, the sides are the same way. Order matters. So you see how A and B are the first two letters in this congruent statement. So side that the, si the, ugh, the side of the triangle that connects point A and B is congruent to the side of the triangle that connects the first two letters in this triangle, or X, Y. A, B, and X, Y are the first two letters in both of the triangles, so they go together. B, C are the last two letters in the first triangle, so they correspond with the last two letters of this triangle. So side BC is congruent to side YZ. And you'll need to know this later to solve problems. All right, side AC, the side connecting the first letter and the last letter, is congruent with the first letter and the last letter of the second triangle. So side XZ. All right, I'll go ahead and do example one, and then I want you to pause the video and do two through six. So example one, angle, or I'm sorry, triangle DEF is congruent to triangle KJI. So you know angle D is equal to angle K, because those are the first two letters. Angle E is equal to angle J, those are the middle two letters. And angle F is equal to angle I, the last two letters. So the question is asking us, what is congruent to side FD? Well, if you look, F and D are the first and the last letter in this congruent statement. So it's going to be congruent to the first and the last letter of the second triangle. So F is congruent to I, and D is congruent to K. So side FD is congruent to side IK. All right, try the rest of these on your own, and I will check your work at the end of the video. So go ahead and pause the video, do these six examples, and then come back. All right, writing congruent statements. Assume the following pairs of, of triangles are congruent. So automatically we know that these two triangles are equal. All sides are equal, all angles are equal. We just need to identify what the corresponding angles and corresponding sides are using geometric notation. They give us enough information to do this. 
So let's start off by just labeling the first triangle that we see. 